Number 59. A bicycle with 24 inch diameter wheels is traveling at 15 miles per hour. Find the angular speed in radians per minute, and then how many revolutions per minute do the wheels make? So consider that a wheel is circular, and we know the diameter of the wheel, and that diameter is going to be 24 inches. If we know the diameter of a wheel, we're able to actually calculate the circumference, and that's the length of this outer edge of the circle. And when a tire rotates, this is the actual length that it is covering. It's covering the circumference right, of the wheel every single full revolution. In other words, that the first step here is going to be to really calculate the length of that circumference. So the circumference formula is going to be pi d. All right, so circumference here is going to be equal pi multiplied by then the diameter, which is 24 inches. So this is just simply 24, well, what happened to the 4? 24 pi inches. Now, nobody really likes to work with pi, so you can throw it on into the calculator, take 24 and multiply it by pi, and you get an answer of about 75.4, right? 75.4 inches. Either answer is equivalent, just so you know. So what I'm going to do, though, from here on out is I use the exact value in the calculator for pi, and I'm going to use this exact value when I do my subsequent calculations. So now what we have to consider is um, now they're telling us the total rate of travel, right, for the car. It says the car is traveling at 15 miles per hour. And our job is to now convert this. I'm going to first do this not into radians per minute, but into revolutions per minute. So our job is to convert this into revolutions per minute. All right. So I realize that there's really two conversions going on here. All right. The miles to revolutions and then the hours to minutes. I'm going to leave a link in the description below here uh, for a uh, detailed discussion about how to do these conversions. Very simple. All right. But I go through it very, very uh, thoroughly, I believe. And I give you a bunch of steps to follow. Okay. Whenever you have to convert like rates, the, the video will help you tremendously. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to deal with my numerator. All right. You can also assume that this is basically over one. In other words, it's 15 miles per every single one hour. Okay. So let me just write that division sign straight across. So what I'm going to do is do my green conversion first. I want to go from miles into number of revolutions. So what we're going to do is we write down our miles and we're going to need to know some facts, all right? Because we need to set up some conversions in here. We need to set up a conversion here, maybe another one, et cetera, et cetera. So first of all, I realize that miles and revolutions, how in the world are they connected? Well, they're connected via the circumference, right? We know that we just calculated this, the circumference. What does that exactly mean? That means in one revolution, one full revolution of that wheel will cover 75.4 inches. Okay, this is now one of my conversion values. I also know that in one mile, there's going to be 5,280 feet. And I also know that one foot is comprised of 12 inches. Okay, you need to know all of this, all right, before you actually do the conversion. So now what I realize is this is just fairly straightforward. Now, whatever unit I'm starting with, the miles, I want them to cancel. So I look at my given relationships up here and I take the mile value wherever I see it and I plug it in the denominator. And the reason why I do that is so that the miles cancel. But once I plug in that mile value in the denominator, I must take its corresponding value of feet and plug that into the numerator. Okay. Now, this would give me feet. I don't want feet. I want revolution. So guess what we got to do? We got to do it again. Okay. So set up another conversion fraction here, and I want my feet to cancel this time. So go up to your given values over here, find feet. Now, obviously, it's not feet, but it's foot. I put it in one foot, right? Foot is singular, feet is plural, but it's measuring the same thing. So all we're going to do there is simply just boom, 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 plug that in. And remember, it went in the denominator because I want the feet to cancel. And then its corresponding value in the... Um, relationship up there has to go into the numerator. But I'm not done, right? That's inches. I don't want inches. I want to know revolutions. So now I have to cancel the inches. So I got to look back up here. There's only one thing left. I got to take that inch value, right? Bring it on down into the denominator so that the inches will indeed cancel. And then what I need to do is take its corresponding value, revolutions, and plug it into the numerator. Oh my god, right? Wow. So... After you do all that, 
take a drink of water if you're talking it out loud because my mouth is extremely dry. Um, but that might be too much information. Anyway, just plug it in. So 15 times 5,280 times 12, and then divided by that exact value from before, 75.398, blah, 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 blah. And this works out to be about 1,000, no, 12,605, sorry. 12,605, now this is revolutions. Okay, so I did my top value. I did my, I got my revolutions. Now what I'm gonna do is do the bottom one. Okay, so I'll, I'll plot this, I'll color this in green. Now what I'm gonna do is the bottom value. Now this is basically saying that I have to do a separate conversion, one hour, and I gotta convert that into minutes. So in other words, I need to know a relationship between hours and minutes, and we do, right? That one hour is comprised of 60 minutes. So I can now do my conversion, right? You set up your conversion fraction. You plug in now the value of the hour in the denominator because you want that unit to cancel. The minutes will go on the top. And obviously, right, you probably didn't even need to do this conversion, but you know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So in other words, one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes, right? And that's exactly what this calculation says it is. So that's the 60 minutes. Now, the beautiful part about this is that at the end now, there's one more step. We're basically then going to take the numerator value we found and then divide it by the denominator value, okay? That's the last step. So it's like the green was step one, the red was step two, and now this division between the two is step three. Place the green value on the top. So that will be now uh, 12,605, 12, and that's in terms of revolutions. Then plug in your 60 minutes on the bottom, and now calculate that. Take that exact answer from before, 12,605.07, blah, 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 divided by 60. And we get a value of approximately now 210 revolutions per minute. And that's how we do the calculation, all right? So <clears throat> that would be the number of revolutions per minute, okay? So let's leave that on up here. All right, I'm going to erase this now, okay. So actually, you know what? Why don't we just erase this part? I'll move it up to here, see if we can just, yeah, that's good enough so you have all the work. Now let's do the angular speed and radians per minute. So here's the thing now. We basically now have 210 revolutions. I'm not gonna, we're, we're definitely not doing this again, I'll tell you that, um, because we already know the value. We already have 210 revolutions per every single minute. Now the, jo the goal here is to convert this now into radians Per minute. So notice the denominator doesn't change. So this is actually a very simple calculation now. We have to go from revolutions into radians. So how do we do that? Well, you have to remember your unit circle and the values, right? This was pi over 2, this was pi, this was going to be uh, 3 halves pi, and then this was 2 pi. So in other words, if the tire rotated one full revolution, right, it would have traveled how many radians? Boom! 2 pi radians, right? So in other words, you can write this equality down that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. Now, once you know that, you're able to then do this conversion. Watch. All we now need to do is set up our conversion fraction. And then we're gonna, we want revolutions to cancel. So we're gonna plug in the word, value revolution on the bottom. We want radians, so that goes on the top. Notice the revolutions will go bye-bye. And now all you gotta do is take that exact answer we found before right, 210.08, blah, 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 and multiply it by now 2 pi. And the answer comes out to be exactly 1,320 radians per minute. Now notice the unit here, radian didn't cancel, neither did the minute, and that's why the value in the end is gonna be radians per minute. And that's that, okay? You could have also left this, I don't know if it would have been, you know, in terms of pi, I'm not really sure the pi's would have, I think, canceled. Uh, yeah, the pies would have actually canceled in this problem. So, um, <clears throat> and the reason for that is because this 75.4 value over here was really equivalent to then 24 pi. And then this value here, you're really taking this, right? And it's part of the denominator of the 12, it, it lives in the denominator here, and then that would have been, you know, in the denominator here, and those two pi, the pies would have canceled. But Anyway, uh, don't worry about it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. 
If it does, please help us out, like, and subscribe. We appreciate it. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. We got thousands of more solutions out there for you to solve specific problems. We go through the OpenStax textbooks, check them out. They're totally free. Download them. All right. And even if you're not using them in your class, you can find almost identical problems to the one you're probably having. All right. And then we have a video out there solving it specifically for you. So we'll be able to help you specifically with your questions. Okay. Instead of a general video, then you're trying to figure out, well, how do I apply this? All right. So hopefully that helps. We'll see you soon. Take care.